Hey everyone, my name is David Sabo and you're listening to the Resilience Chronicles podcast. Every week, we're inviting entrepreneurs from all sorts of industries to tell us their journeys and their stories and to get a sneak peek into the secrets of their productivity and high performance habits. Today I have Blaze Bully sitting in front of me. Uh, Blaze, you're doing a lot of things. You're running your own marketing agency. You're an athlete, you're a bodybuilder, you're an influencer on Instagram, you do your own YouTube channel, um, you're traveling the world, you're a digital nomad. That's a hell of a lot of things to do at once. So I usually find that people like yourself who are you know, working on their own terms, living life on their own terms, we're all a bit of a misfit with a great story to tell. So what's your story? Welcome everyone, my name is Blaze and uh... My story is quite a long story, but I try to shorten it a little bit. So you mentioned that people like myself, you found them um, a misfit of yeah, some sort, kind yeah, of like a misfit, um, and that's how I feel usually. To be honest, um, most of my friends are in the nine to five uh, work, or or some of the people I do I did sport together, they just. Um, quit sport after a while you know yeah um but but for some reason i always stick with them uh i did swimming i did actually tried soccer as well i did kickbox long distance running um water polo i did bmx um natural bodybuilding crossfit powerlifting and and i usually leave out a couple of things from this list because i cannot really keep them <laughs> in my head because it's quite a long list isn't it it is it is it is you're a real born sports person. Yeah, I love, love, love sports, to be honest. And what I, what I actually, there are two really important things I've, um, I've carried with myself from sports. So number one is that I'm the type of the person who, who actually perform better uh, on his own, meaning if there are no uh, strict rules or I don't have to be strictly with the team for example in water polo you have to you have to rely on your teammates but um, I'm usually better with whenever I'm on my own and that's how I feel about about business as well that's that was the reason making my decision not to go for a company as an intern rather just you know find my way um, to actually work uh, freely from home that's quite interesting because usually when you li- read books or watch, you know, YouTube videos or listen to podcasts about things like leadership, management and entrepreneurship, um, one of the things on the top three, uh, you know, must have skills is the ability to work in a team. And, you know, there is even there is this saying that says, if you want to go fast, you go, you go alone. But if you want to go far, you go, you go in a team. So what do you think about this? Is this a conflict? between team versus individual or or is it not well to be to be honest to answer your question i think there there are um there are a long way for me to improve working with a team i have bad experiences from my past um uh, being part of a team mm-hmm. uh several times and i always get you know the signaling that i'm better on my own which is not true um what i needed to realize is that um it's super important and crucial to pick your team members. So when you are in water polo, you just go there and say, you want, I want to play water polo. You have a team already. Right. And whether you like them or not, you have to stick with them. Um, on the other hand, when you do business, you can actually invest your time to actually meet your business partners, as I've met with you. Um, and then you can decide whether they would be a good fit to work with you on the long run. Right. So it's more about the sort of uh, closing the feedback loop of of do you have oversight on on is it a good fit or not to work with somebody or 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 are you basically forced into a situation um, which makes a lot of sense. So as we said in the beginning of this conversation, you are doing a lot of things. You are basically, we could say, you're keeping yourself very busy. How do you not lose track of time? How do you not lose track of you know sight of of all the things that you're doing at once? Well, to be honest, I do lose track of time and all the things I do. (laughs) Um, There's one thing I've been introduced, um, I think, half a year before. That's called Trello. That's software you showed me, uh, which basically helped me to to put everything into columns and brackets and, you know, lists. um, And I can keep them over there uh, so I don't have to keep them in my head, uh, which helped me tremendously. 
So that's very interesting that you're saying. So basically, you're using Trello as an extension of your mind? Yeah, it's, Is that... it's basically my mind over there in a map. It's, cool. it's like mind mapping. Right, right, right. So you don't have to remember things, and that's basically you're not cluttering your mind, so you don't have to remember. Um, that's very interesting, because we started going into time management, really. And uh, you mentioned Trello as a tool. Now, what's the number one principle about time management that you've learned in the last couple of years, be it during your, your athlete uh, career, or during bodybuilding, which you've been doing for, what, seven years now? Um, yeah, it is and seven. I, if I remember correctly, you also have done it uh, competitively, which you know requires a lot of lot of um, um, strictness, lots of um, lots of dedication and commitment, um, or in business. So, what's the number one principle that you always remember when you're trying to make the best use of your time? To be honest, I don't really have a number one, but I have two in my mind. And the first one is to always, you know, focus on the thing you are doing. Um, because to me, I have a mild ADD, so I can be really easily distracted, you know, with several thoughts. And then my mind just wanders everywhere and I, you know, I cannot really find my way back to the, to the project or the work mm -hmm. I was focusing on. So to me especially, but I think for, for in general, for our generation, Generation Y or Z, it's super, super crucial to, to have the focus. And a second one that's not been talked that much on, you know, podcasts and social media, but I find that super, super, in, uh, super, super important is taking action right away. Because we tend to, if you, if you just think, think about that, you wake up and then you are, might be in your bed for like 15 to 30 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever, just thinking. But you actually have to plan what are you going to do in the morning, um, in the evening, the day before. So when you wake up, you don't feel like, to me, a morning routine is just I jump into a cold shower, then I brush my teeth, I'm drinking a greet, etc., etc. I don't want to go into details. But the point is, I do it right away. So I wake up and I, and I go. I don't, don't, I don't think really, about it. Yeah, I don't just really do think about it. And, I, and that's how I approach everything else, you know, in, in training. I don't feel like training. So whenever this start, like every, everyone has this, you know, sound in their head that I don't yeah. feel like training today. The way I counter that is that whenever I hear that voice, I go right away. Because if I, if I have a second thought on like whether I should go down or not, I would figure out that this is not you know, the perfect day to train today. Uh, and I would convince myself that there are you know, rational things why I shouldn't yeah. go. Yeah, you don't give yourself the chance to yeah, yeah, yeah. counter I just, your... I just yeah. don't, don't do that. So I think, I think you just mentioned a very important point about how, how our minds work and how the human brain works. Because lots of people start planning when they face an incredible obstacle, when, when they face something that, you know, a mountain that needs, needs climbing. Yeah. And there is this very interesting way of uh, how your brain tricks yourself into thinking that you're actually achieving something when you start planning things. But you're not actually achieving anything. You're just planning things. Yeah. You just have a piece of pen and a paper in your hand and you are putting down your thoughts. You are, as, as you said it with Trello, you're using the paper as an extension of your mind, but you're not actually creating value. So I think, I think your habit of just really just rushing into, the, into action uh, is a really good habit and a really good skill to have to counter that Absolutely. and to keep you, keep you going all the time. Um, which brings us to the next topic, which is um, if, you're, if you're in action mode all the time, uh, do you not get exhausted? Do you not get that feeling that you know you want to keep going, but you 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 need to you need to stop and you need to rest? What do you do then? So there are two things again I do, um, and the first one is I like to think about you know working um, the same way that working out. So you know your brain is kind of like a muscle as well. So when you don't feel like pushing harder in, you know, powerlifting or bodybuilding or, or anything like that, you always have to push a little harder, just a little bit harder, just, just a little more, because that way you can be a better version of yourself the next day. You can improve. That's the way you improve. So I like to think about, you know, cognitive work the same way. So whenever I don't feel like, I, 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 I notice that I don't, I'm not, you know, into doing the, the certain mood. tasks. Yeah. And, uh, what I would do is just, okay, I, I notice it and then I keep going for like another hour 
Uh, no more than that. I, I, there is no need to you know over exhaust myself, but I push a little harder. That way, I can I can actually understand you know how far I can go, and I can always make sure I improve. That's that's to me that's rule number one, and rule number two. And I, I think it's more important than rule number one, actually. So this should be the rule number one. Okay. <laughs> is that you have to you have to actually schedule um, s- certain tasks or you know events or certain things into your life where you switch off. To me, these are having you know go down and train for one and a half hour. That's when that's when I let my mind to switch off. But then it's I, like a scheduled maintenance. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's like one and a half to two hours. You always have that. Um, so it helps you a lot or in the morning I do meditation but um, sometimes I do it in the afternoon when I'm like super exhausted and super tired I just you know let myself switch off the right. meditation or yoga or you know it, it, it doesn't really matter you can you can you can as well watch tv if you want to but you make sure you have you know rules around it not you know jumping on like a serious marathon and watching game of thrones for like three days in a row and then right. you are moving over. It's easy to get sucked into yeah. those those type of binging habits. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So, what what are the things that you're learning? Because you've amassed a great deal of knowledge and experience about your capabilities, both physically and mentally. And you you have been on this journey for 10, 15 years already. You've achieved uh, amazing things, both in sports and now basically living life on your own terms. So. It's a, it's a learning journey for everyone. Where are you in this journey at the moment? What are the things, what's your mountain that needs climbing? What's the challenge that you're facing today? Um, are you asking the next step or, yeah. or for a yeah. longer? So this is the, in this, podcast, in this podcast, I think this is the moment of sort of radical transparency. We are all struggling with something. I always have and, radical transparency. Yeah. Always so so what, is it, what is the thing about your body, about your mind, about your habits that you're struggling now, that you're trying to overcome? Okay, let's start with the body. Okay. So with my body, um, I faced a really serious injury with BMX, um, having an arthritis in my hand. So I cannot really do that on a competitive level. I needed to understand that my body cannot handle that many impact. Um, so that's, that's when I shifted towards bodybuilding and powerlifting, yeah. but now I have a lower back injury as well, um, which can be derived for my BMX career, but I'm not going to go into details over here. Um, the point is, I need, need to understand that you're not a superhuman. At the end of the day, whether you are like 20, 30, 40, there is that many impact and you know exposure your body can handle, um, physical exposure I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so... To me, physically, it's the it's the part of my life when I a little bit, you know, take a step back and really think about what would I actually want to do, what I enjoy, how much risk I'm willing to take um, in order to improve. Um, so it's it's a really interesting journey to me because I was always, you know, um, how would say, um, hard like a hard achiever. Achiever. Overachiever. Overachiever, yeah, that's the best. So I always yeah. an over overachiever. So to me, saying myself that, you know, Blaze, stop for a second, like, you know, take a step back and, you know, chill, that it's really hard. But I need to learn it and I to, think I'm to cope with the yeah. fact that you do have limits, like mortal beings as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if I if I can give one advice for the people listening is uh if you are doing sport, you always have to take a step back. Just make sure you are, you know, not breaking in the process because then you got nowhere right so what um, about the pink jello in your in your skull the pink jello yeah um you know on that part i've not really so i would say i'm in the process of actually uh, being interested about how to perform better cognitively mm-hmm. for a year so that's a really short journey to me yeah uh, and an insanely uh eventful journey right now i'm looking for actually learning how to focus more because you can always be better. I think I've, you know, improved a lot in the last couple months as well, mm-hmm. but I'm, I'm sure that I can, you know, there's, there's so many good tricks and techniques and yeah. um, things to improve my focus. So focus is number one to me right now. And a second one is basically the same than with fitness to, you know, switch off sometimes, do meditate do you know chill out have a half an hour long conversation with your friend um, because you can come back stronger right right 
So you mentioned focus quite a few times, uh, both in relation to a generational thing and both in, gen in relation to what you refer to as a mild uh, case of an ADD. Do you think this is, uh, this is a broader generational thing? Uh, I mean, I usually try to refrain from generalizations, but um, you seem to, to refer to it as something that's pretty common uh, within people in their teenage years, in their early 20s. Um, what do you think? Well, I can only talk about my generation because I've not, you of know, course, not been, yeah, not been working with you know older people. Um, but I'm I'm afraid that it is uh, a big problem nowadays for in our society for our generation um, because we have so many distractions. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have all the social media sites. Um, you can actually go and try to pick up uh, ladies within a click of a button. Uh, you go Tinder. So there are like so many things that can distract you. You wake up in the morning and you're curious about how much likes you received or right. how many new messages you have. Right. You get this digital addiction yeah. built All up. All those habits are going to teach you how not to focus because then you get mm -hmm. dopamine from them. So I think there is something needs to be uh, spoken more uh, for our generation to, because I feel like most of my friends um, not even realizing what I'm talking about over it. They would be like, yeah, well, yeah, I guess Blaze is a bit weird and, you know, they, 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 they go with that one and they just keep doing what they are doing. Um, so I'm, I'm curious when would be the time when more people from my generation actually start to fight this kind of... I see, concept. I see. Yeah, so basically, um, the key takeaway I'm getting from you during this conversation, which is which has been going for about 15 minutes now, and I'm already learning a lot from you. Uh, one thing is that what you say is that basically an entire generation of people are struggling with dopamine addiction, yes. in a sense, coming from all the digital yeah. senses, which then has a negative impact on their ability to focus, and then it requires actual conscious effort to to kind of negate that, to, to reverse the effects of this dopamine addiction. And the first step is awareness. Um, so, I mean, I, I remember we having these conversations quite a, quite a while back. And uh, what do you think, where, is, where are we with this digital dopamine addiction awareness thing? Where, where are we going? What could, as a generation, uh, do better? What's, what's the way out of this? So, where we are at... Um, I have no idea, David. I have no idea. Um, all I know is that if I would say from hundred of my, like there are hundred friends of mine, um, there would be two or three actually being open to talk about this. So mm -hmm. that's three percent. That's not too much. So very, um, very early stages. Yeah, probably. I yeah. might you know hanging around with the wrong people, but I'm. I think I'm. I'm not. So okay. that, that's you know a representative uh, sample. I would say. Okay. So, freeing ourselves from dopamine addiction, creating or developing the ability to focus, and that basically helps us becoming a productive and also a bit more established, a bit more satisfied person. Do you consider yourself a productive person? Not really. Um, Why is that? I think, I think my friends around me, like people around me, they think I'm productive. Um, but I don't really consider myself productive because I usually like to hang around with people who are uh, better at things than me. Again from not really. So I'm not really considering myself as a productive person um, because, you know, people around me, they think I'm productive, but I don't feel like because I hang around with people uh, usually being better at things than me. Or mm -hmm. if, if I'm not hanging around, I still would watch their, you know, yeah. YouTube or watch, you know, listen to the podcast. Revert back to... And then yeah. I can understand that I'm nowhere close to where I actually want to be. So, yeah, short answer, I'm not a productive person, but uh, I'm getting better at it. You know, every single month, every single month, I'm a little bit more productive and I think it's a good thing to have. Okay, great. So as we are nearing the end of, of the podcast, um, there are a few last questions I really wanted to ask from you. As you know, the title of this episode and all of the, the entire podcast is Resilience Chronicles. So what does the word resilience mean to you? Resilience? Personally? Yeah. Uh, let me take it into two different groups again, physical okay. and cognitive. Um, in physical, it's, you know, standing up again, like yeah. 
you would you like would when you fall with the BMX. Of course, <laughs> definitely. That's that, that's that was the kind of guy I was. Like uh, I have videos on YouTube and I crash and I've never on the like if I'm if I stay on the ground for more than like ten seconds, then I have like some serious problem. You know, right. broke some bones or something like that. Um, same with bodybuilding. Um, you have you know ups and downs. Sometimes you don't feel like. Sometimes you are weaker. You have those days. Uh, but you go down the next day as well, and you try to be better and improve. That's resilience to mm -hmm. me physically and mentally. Um, pretty much the same, but I would say you have to. I want to give examples because I usually learn by examples. Yeah. So whenever I listen to a podcast, I always uh, understand the individual better if he gives examples. So I would say um, it doesn't matter how much money you have if you start a business. Uh, I think I do believe you're eventually going to. Um, leave a lot of money and time on the table it, it, it could happen easily we yeah. both know um so that way uh i think the right mindset is to um try to try to understand and try to realize how much you learned out of those things so that way you, you wouldn't feel like those are loss you wouldn't feel you wouldn't think of them as loss you would rather think this was that amount of time investment that amount of money investment and now i'm better at it you know i learned a lot i learned from my mistakes I wrote them down and then you bounce back again. So you start all over again, but you can do it in like a shorter amount of time. You can do it better. You can hire the better people, um, get, get a greater product and stuff like that. Right. So it's basically, I mean, by definition, resilience is the ability to, uh, when you're in a crisis state, leave the crisis state and return to your pre-crisis state, be it a physical or a, or a mental crisis. Um, so I, it seems to me that you've learned all of this by a real trial and error way through the way of an entrepreneur. Um, I think there are lots of people who are either from a business perspective or from a mental perspective or even from a sports athletic perspective are at the very beginning of the journey and these people are listening to this podcast and they're looking to you and see a guy who's been doing exactly the thing that they are planning to do for a number of years. What's your advice to them? What would be the advice you would give yourself if you could travel back five, seven years in time and talk to yourself? Okay, let's see for sports. Um, I have to think about a little bit because I'm not <laughs> sure. But uh, what would be number one? I wouldn't say take it easy. That would be a, you know, a smart adv advice for me to take it easy. But if I would take it easy, then I wouldn't enjoy it. You know, it wouldn't be the same. Yeah. So I wouldn't give that advice. Um, I think I've, for sports I'm good I feel like I wouldn't really I would, I would just you know go there and tell the little kid that like look it's going to be an amazing journey and do it as you wish you know do it as you please um, one thing I would I would say that if you don't feel like the sport you are doing is for you just you know try another one because there are like so many sports out there right I obviously start you know try so 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 many right um, and it's okay to change your mind it, it is and, and it's and it's actually you know useful to try a lot like you have to you have to try at least like five to ten sports before you know what are you the best in uh, yeah. unless you you know uh, pick up a squash racket and you you know beat <laughs> everyone then you just stick there because you are you know you could be the world champion prodigy. yeah yeah but you would realize that I think you would definitely realize that one as for um, as for business, let's say, or stay true to your original plan. Uh, mm -hmm. And when I say this is that um, we are all dreamers, you know, entrepreneurs. We are usually all dreamers. So when you say I'm going to build um, six-figure business in this or that, um, and you think about okay, in order to get there, I have to you know wake up five thirty in the morning. And you, you are super excited about it, waking up 5.30. It's super, super hard to actually stick to the original plan because uh, when you are in the process, you don't feel like. Um, so, so yeah, that, this is something I'm still learning. And, I, and I, I don't really think there are too many people on planet Earth who can do it, you know, for 100%. Uh, we, are all, sure. we are all have these. But yeah, all try, to be, all. try to be as good at this as you can. Always try to be better at, you know, sticking to your plan. So when you tell yourself, all right, from tomorrow I'm going to um, read 10 emails for hiring, you do that because you already wanted to do that. You remember that that was the reason you wanted to do that because you want to get somewhere. So don't get lost among the lines. Very good. So we need to free ourselves from our dopamine addiction, which many of us don't even realize we have, 
in order for build the develop develop the ability to focus and then when we can focus we just need to stick to the plan allow ourselves failures every now and then because we're all human we are fallible but all we need to do is to just get up one more time every time we fall and everything will be going exactly the way they should be going. Blaze, thank you very much for uh, coming and joining me to this conversation. I really enjoyed this and I really learned a lot from you. So um, I'm really hoping that all the people who are listening uh, have felt the same during the last 25 minutes. And um, I'm very looking forward to seeing your journey in the near future. You will definitely see my journey, David. Um, <laughs> I can see us moving uh, together, you know, in the next couple of years. And uh, it was a pleasure to be here. And um, for everyone listening, I wish you a great day and stay focused. Very good. Very good. Hey, guys, please make sure to follow Blaze on YouTube and Instagram. He is basically documenting his entire life. So you won't miss a thing. And we will back in very soon with another guest. And thank you for listening.